Hey everyone, Konnichiwa, Nikki Young here, back with my new true crime podcast, Serial Napper. Thanks so much for tuning in. Tonight's case is going to remind you just how quickly the online world can forever change your real life. Now, I'd like to take a second to thank Linda for sending me this case. Thank you so much. Linda is the one who created me the most amazing, absolutely incredible cover art for my podcast. And when she sent me this story, I knew I had to share it with you. But before we get started, I wanted to thank everyone who took the time to enter my giveaway. You guys absolutely rock. I'm going to have a special guest stop by just a second here, and he's going to draw a name from this hat. The winner will be getting a Just Killing Time True Crime box of goodies. And the name is Jamie Geyer. Yay! So, Jamie, I will absolutely be in touch and make sure we get you your box. Thanks so much to everyone who participated. I'm going to be launching some more giveaways soon, so if you didn't win this time, make sure you stay tuned. Now, if you like this episode and you like this podcast after you hear it, I would love if you could take a few minutes to leave me a review on whatever podcasting app or website you're listening to me on. I'm really trying to grow this channel, but of course, your help is needed to make that happen. And reviews are really what push me to keep going. They give me the motivation to push forward, and they also bump my podcast up in the ranks, which really helps. All right, here we go. So <laughs> grab a drink, grab some snacks, mostly a drink because you're going to need it after you hear this story. This is the true story of Jason Worley, a software engineer who turned to the internet for marital advice only to have his entire life destroyed by an absolutely vile woman. Jason went by the screen name Jason in Hell on Reddit. Now, if you don't know what Reddit is, let me fill you in. It's basically a massive online forum or community where people can ask questions, they can get advice, they can share information and post their opinions about pretty much everything and anything. Reddit is actually the sixth most popular site in the United States and the 18th most popular in the whole world. It is a massive database of information and it's very easy to get lost in it. Like I could spend hours and hours and hours just digging through topics about pretty much anything. Now, just like with almost everything else on the internet, Threads on Reddit can be archived, so once posted on the site, it's never truly gone, even if you try to delete it. So you can actually go back and reread threads dating back to the very beginning of Reddit and read them as if it were the day that it was posted. So like I said, Jason was having marital issues and he decided to take it to Reddit for some anonymous advice from strangers which I kind of get because your friends are going to be a little bit biased and maybe you don't want everyone that you know in real life to know what's going on in your life. I also think it's incredibly sad because he was clearly going through something really difficult and perhaps he didn't have anyone to talk to. Now I'm going to read you Jason's full Reddit post out loud and I'm also going to include a link to the full post in my show notes so that you can, you know, reread it, review it, take from it what you will. The post has been archived from the 28th of October, 2016. But like I mentioned, the internet is forever. Okay, here it goes. I caught my wife cheating on me over a year ago. I stayed with her for the sake of our children, but I haven't been able to get it off of my mind since. It has been 476 days since I confronted her about it. How do I know? Because every time I catch myself thinking about it, I tell myself it's only been X days. Maybe you won't think about it tomorrow. So to go back to the beginning, I had just taken on a new project and new responsibilities at work. I was working a lot of hours, like 60 plus per week, 
and was noticeably stressed. It was in May of 2015 that I noticed that she had added a password to her phone. When confronted about it, she told me it was because she was planning my Father's Day present and didn't want me to ruin the surprise. About a week later, she came to me and told me that she felt guilty keeping a big secret from me and told me that she was having our neighbor, a contractor, build a home office for me as my present. It struck me as odd, as in our six years together, she has never said she felt guilty about anything and always insists that she never regrets anything in her life. Time goes on, her phone is still password protected, and things don't feel right. I see her using her phone and smiling to herself more and more often, but when I ask her what she is doing, she says nothing and puts her phone away. So one morning, I wait for her to get in the shower, and I grab her phone before it requires the password. I go through her messages and find that she is texting the neighbor, I am all covered in frosting, you want to lick it off? There were no other messages to the neighbor, but I found out later that was because she had set up her phone to delete messages after a certain amount of time. I felt uncomfortable with it, but I knew she had a perverted sense of humor and I thought she would never do anything to hurt me. More time goes by and the neighbor is spending more and more time at our house, but the office is being completed slower and slower. I can't help but worry that something isn't right, so I start checking her location using Google Timeline. It was at this point that I realized that there are large gaps in her GPS history because she was turning off her phone's GPS. Fast forward to July and at this point, the paranoia is driving me nuts. So I tell her that I need to install new antivirus on her phone. While she has it unlocked for me to install the anti-theft software so I can remotely turn the GPS back on and set up AT&T message backup and restore so I can read all of her text messages from that point on my computer. The next day, my mother asks to spend time with my two kids so my wife drops them off with her and has the day to herself. I watch my wife's activity from work as she spends the day trying to meet up with the neighbor, but is unsuccessful because he is busy with another job site. That night, we get the kids back from my mom's house and we go out to dinner with the neighbor, his girlfriend, and his son. My wife and his girlfriend are having a good time drinking, laughing, and just joking around. His girlfriend mentions that she would like to go see Magic Mike XXL. I say, it's a good idea, and I'll watch the kids so my wife and her can go. So my wife and her go, and the neighbor and I go back to my house so the kids can play video games together. The kids are back in my son's room playing games, and the neighbor is sitting across from me on the other couch. It is at this point that my wife starts texting him. She is describing sex acts that she would like to perform with him, and he is reciprocating. She tells him to check his Snapchat, and at the same time, I get a Snapchat from her too. It is her fingering herself in a bathroom stall. They keep talking, trying to figure out when they can meet up and have sex. They decide on Monday morning after I go to work. So in my head, I had already planned to pretend to leave and circle back to catch them. But then they tell each other that they love each other, and it's all I can do to not leap off the couch and knock him out. But I contain myself and continue reading the conversation unfolding in front of me. Then he tells her, you're my girl now, to which she replies, always have been, ending with him writing, and always will be. My wife and the neighbor's girlfriend return from the movie, and I ask them politely to sit down. I then ask the kids to stay in my son's room and shut the door. I return to the living room and confront my wife and the neighbor. I say, so, you two love each other, huh? My wife goes into full-blown denial mode, and the neighbor's girlfriend starts smacking him. I ask my wife if she has been texting him, and she says no. So, I show her the text messages. She admits to it, but says it was the first time it had gone that far. I asked my wife if she has sent him pictures, and she says no. So I show her the picture, and she admits, but she says it was the first time. I ask her if she is having sex with him, and she says no. 
Because I didn't wait to catch them having sex together, I didn't have any evidence to prove her wrong, so that one stayed unresolved. I tell her that I am leaving her. She tells me that she will make sure I never see my kids again if I do. She planned on using the fact that I had attempted suicide in high school to prove me unfit to have the children. She continues to say that it was my fault for being so busy with work and stressed out, that she just wanted someone she could talk to. Then she gives me an ultimatum to decide what I'm going to do or she will decide for me. The neighbor's girlfriend starts defending the two of them, saying that it couldn't have been serious if they weren't having sex, and that my wife and I are too perfect together to let this break us up. The neighbors go home, and my wife and I argue for the rest of the night about what we are going to do. We go to bed separately, having not resolved anything. We keep going back and forth on the subject all weekend, and finally settle on we were going to separate temporarily while we figure out what we want. I was going to stay in the house, and she was going to take the kids and go to her mom's house. That Monday, I go to work, and I get a text from her in the middle of a meeting with my bosses, stating that she had explained things to our kids, but they were upset, and I need to explain it to them also. I get home from work to find my kids crying. She had told them that mommy had to move out because dad was mad at her. When my son wanted to stay with me, she told him that he can't. My son put it together that if mommy has to move out because I'm mad at her and he must move out, then I must have been mad at him too. My daughter was crying because my son was. I don't think she was old enough to understand what was happening. It was at this moment I realized she was going to drag the kids through hell if I left her, so I swallowed my feelings and begged her to stay. She agreed and insisted that I apologize to our neighbor since we were all still going to need to hang out with them because our sons were good friends. I hate it, but I do it anyway. We still hang out with them from time to time, they come to our various birthday and holiday parties. But I'd do anything for my kids, and I behave civil every time. Things die down for a while. I still think about it constantly. I worry, how can I keep from making her so unhappy that she cheats on me again? Then, almost a year from the original incident, around Father's Day again, she sends him pictures again. She claims it was an accident, that she meant to send them to me instead. I don't fully believe her, but I move on anyway. Things have been quiet on that front for about four months now, but I still think about it constantly. This is going to sound stupid, but I feel like I have a part of my brain that I can't shut off, that is always thinking. I used to use that to solve programming problems, and it made me very good at my job, But ever since this incident, the only thing it makes me think about is her and him and if I did the right thing. My job performance has suffered, and I feel like I haven't gotten sleep in months. I'm afraid that after this much time and the fact that I begged her back, that to say that I want a divorce now would only make her more vindictive towards my children and I. I just feel like I have put myself so deep in a hole that I can never get back out. I haven't really talked to anyone about this. I didn't want to talk to my mom about it because I felt she would treat my wife differently and I didn't need the two of them fighting any more than they already do. I tried talking to one friend about it, but his best advice was to put my trust in God, but that was not much solace for me as I am an atheist. So, I have no clue what to do with my feelings or how to move on from this. Now, that's the end of his post. There were over 200 comments on his post, and I will read you just a few of them. The top comment is, You are trying to navigate this alone, and you should seek counsel ASAP. You should have done this months ago. Your wife's threats should hold no weight until you can get a professional legal opinion on your exposure in a divorce. 
You won't be doing your children any favors by remaining in a marriage that is now founded on lies, infidelity, and outright bullying. She made you apologize to your neighbor and you did it? Come on, man. You can't honestly say that you see any sort of future here that isn't a hell on earth for you. So for your sake and the sake of your children, get a lawyer ASAP and follow his directions to the letter. Another one reads, I cannot believe you stayed with her. I cannot believe you begged her to stay. I cannot believe you apologized to the neighbor. And another one reads, she is poison in your life. Get rid of it. And a dysfunctional family is worse for the kids than a divorce. As for the kids believing her lies, tell them not to believe anything she says about you or you say about her. Now, I'm trying to think what my response would have been if at the time I happened to be on Reddit and read this thread. I would like to think that I would be more supportive than not that I would try to see it from all sides. But if this guy were my friend, I would be telling him to run as fast and far away as he can get. Hearing his story really hits me hard. I feel incredibly sad for him. She clearly has control over him and he seems to be quite naive. So while I would hope I would have responded a little bit more gently, I can understand why his post was received the way that it was. A few days later, on November 1st, 2016, Jason posted an update on Reddit. I'm also going to post a link to this thread in my podcast comments, but it read, Instead of trying to fix something she doesn't want to fix, she has refused counseling several times in the past before this even happened. I'm going to get myself and my kids out. I meet with an attorney next week. Thank you everyone for helping me to see how far I had my head up my ass. Now Jason had tons of support on this update. Lots of people supporting him, having his back, telling him that he was making the right decision. And honestly, from my perspective, I would have agreed. It seemed like things were going to be taken care of, finally. Jason was gonna stick up for himself and it was about time. He was going to move onward and upward. On November 15th, 2016, Jason would ask his wife for a divorce. From there, things were about to spiral down an absolute hellhole that nobody should ever have to go through. A news story about a woman who had killed her two children after her software engineer husband named Jason Worley asked her for a divorce broke. People on Reddit began to make the connection. Could it be Jason, the one with the screen name Jason in Hell? He was also a software engineer, and he also had two kids. Plus, he was about to ask his wife for a divorce, according to the latest Reddit update. Many people thought that it was too close of a connection to be a coincidence, while others just held on to hope that maybe it wasn't him. On November 21st, Jason a.k.a. Jason and Hell, posted another follow-up on Reddit. He confirmed that, sadly, it was his story in the news. His wife, Brandy, had killed his two children after he asked her for the divorce. The title of his post read, Update, Thank You, and the post was written as follows. I would like to give a heartfelt and sincere thank you for the advice and support I have received here. No one could have foreseen the tragedy that resulted from me filing for divorce. You guys perform a wonderful service to those in need, and I hope you continue to do so in the future. And then, at the bottom of his post, it linked to an article about the murder. Even in his absolute grief... He maintained his composure, he wasn't angry, and he wasn't reactive. I spend a lot of time on the internet, more than I would like to admit. I see posts like this every single day. Men and women who are in toxic relationships, who are going through divorces, who suspect their spouses are cheating, 
And it's all too easy to throw your opinion out there, not worrying about the consequences. Now, of course, I'm not saying that Jason or any of the Reddit commenters were to blame for the actions of this absolute vile monster. I'm just saying that it's all too easy to forget that at some point in the universe, the internet and real life do meet and things written online can have real life consequences. Now, I'm going to play you a recording of the 911 call that Brandy made to the police after killing her children. It is heartbreaking and it's chilling. The tone of her voice, the words that she's speaking not matching the tone. Have a listen for yourself. Montgomery County 911, where's your emergency? 1203 South Madison Street. In what town? Darlington. Hey, what's going on there? I just stabbed myself and I killed my two children. You stabbed yourself and killed your two children? Mm-hmm. Okay, and what's your name? Brandy Worley. Brandy what? Worley. Okay. How do you spell your last name? W-O-R-L-E-Y. children at? In my daughter's room, on the floor. In your daughter's room on the floor? Okay. And and what caused you to do this today? My husband wanted to divorce and wanted to take my kid. I won't let him have my kid. Okay, and how old are your children? Seven and three. Ten and three? Seven. Seven and three? Mm-hmm. Okay. And where did you stab yourself at? In the neck. Okay. Are you bleeding? Yeah, there's blood everywhere. Okay. And where are you at? In my living room. You're in your living room? On November 16th, after coming home from the dance performance for their daughter, Brandy Worley went into the Walmart in Crawfordsville, Indiana, saying she needed to buy pipe cleaners for a school project for their son, Tyler. Instead, Brandy bought a combat knife that she stashed in her son's room once she arrived home. She told Jason that he could sleep on the couch, which would have been completely normal as they were in the process of separating, but he declined, saying he would rather sleep in the basement. As Jason slept, Brandy lured Tyler to little Charlie's bedroom, stating there would be a sleepover. Then she fatally stabbed the children in their necks, first her son, and then her daughter, and then she stabbed herself in her own neck. Brandy then called 911 to report the murders, that calm and emotionless call that you just listened to. When Jason woke up to screaming, Brandy told him, now you can't take the kids from me. Brandy Worley was placed in the Montgomery County Jail in Crawfordsville while she awaited trial. Originally, she pleaded not guilty, and many thought that she was going to plead insanity. However, that wasn't to be. In January of 2018, Brandy Worley pleaded guilty to murder and was sentenced to 65 years for murdering Charlie and 55 years for murdering Tyler, giving her a consecutive total of 120 years in prison. In a statement, Jason stated, All I care is to never see her again, out of sight and out of mind. In March of 2017, their divorce became final. Jason came back to post an update on Reddit under a different name, Jason in Code. Both of his usernames have since been deleted, so it's unclear if he has quit Reddit altogether or if he's under a new alias now but people are still talking about him online and hoping that he's okay. Now, I won't read his entire update, 
the most recent one that he has posted in March 2017 because it is quite long. But I will read a few snippets. And then again, I'm going to post the link to the entire update in my show notes. Here are a few snippets. I guess the first question to answer is how I'm doing. And to that, I would say I am doing well. I have bad days, but I would think that that is to be expected. It is just important that I or anyone going through something continue to use the support of friends and family as well as good coping skills to not let myself be completely defeated on those bad days. The second question would be, how do I feel about the sentencing? That is something harder to answer because no matter what the sentence, nothing will bring back my beloved children. If I can impart on you something I have learned through all of this is that you should always take the time to be with the ones you love. It doesn't matter if they are asking you to read The Pokey Little Puppy for the millionth time or asking you to play Smash Bros, even though you both know they will wipe the floor with you every time. Just do it because you never know what time will be the last time. Always make sure they know how much you love them. I had the fortune that the last thing my children ever heard me say was, I love you, good night, I will see you in the morning. So that's the story for tonight. I'm going to end it there. This one was a tough one. Um, I, I read all about this over the weekend and honestly, I am not okay after, after hearing about it. So hug your little ones a little extra tighter. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this podcast, If you like the episode, if you like the podcast, I appreciate any reviews you could provide on whatever podcast app you're listening to. I'm so thankful for your support. And again, thank you. Thank you to Linda. If you guys have any ideas for specific cases you'd like me to cover, I would love to hear them. I know there are so many out there. This one absolutely broke my heart. And when I heard it, I needed to cover it. But I know there are so many out there that we can cover. If you want to reach out, you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Serial Napper. That's S-E-R-I-A-L-N-A-P-P-E-R. Or if you're on Apple, just search for Serial Napper. If you're on Spotify, guess what? You don't need a premium account to listen to podcasts. Just search Serial Napper and all of my episodes should come up. Until next time, don't be a Dahmer. Bye.